Hello, my friends, and welcome back to another video. Today, Kenzie and I went to a head spa for the very first time. First time. So specialty head and scalp spas have been a longstanding practice in a variety of Asian cultures. And recently these techniques have become a more popular offering in US spas as well. We have been hearing more and more people rave about head spas, but what even is a head spa? Like what do they do there? What are the benefits? So we found a spa near us that offers a variety of scalp treatments using Japanese techniques. So come along with us to uh, see what's going on with our scalps. <laughs> So tomorrow I am going to a head spa for the first time and I don't know much about head spas but everything that I do has really come from TikTok. In the past like six months or so I have seen so many videos on my For You page about the head spa experience and I've heard the experience itself can be really relaxing but also the results of it can have a lot of benefits to your hair and your scalp. So I'm excited. I'm, I'm really just trying to go in with an open mind. Surround myself to the experience, hopefully learn a lot, and uh, just have a fun day with my bestie. I am just so excited. First of all, I love to have my hair washed. That, to me, is the luxury of life. I don't know what to expect, and to be honest, like, I don't even care what they do. I'm just, I'm just here for the entire experience. This is, this is a treat yourself day. I feel like sometimes between washes, my scalp can get pretty itchy. And honestly, sometimes that itchiness can lead me to wash my hair before it's even looking oily. So I'm hoping that maybe there's something they can do at the head spa to help with that. Or I can learn a technique from them that I can do from home so that I can go longer between washes because I know that's better for my hair, and my curls, without uh, anything funky going on with my scalp. I don't think I really have a problem area that I'm looking for a solution to, but I mean, who knows? I could walk in there tomorrow and maybe I have a problem I didn't even know about. They said not to wear too much makeup or, you know, wear what you're comfortable with because they give you like an eye mask and they give you like a robe. So I will do whatever they say. I am just so excited. They said to come with our hair just dirty. Don't wash it the day or two before. This is day three hair. Tomorrow would be the day that I would usually wash it. So it's going to save me time in the morning. Just get to roll up there, hair a mess, and see what magic they can work. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Hi everyone, my name's Leanne and I'm trichologist and co-founder of Ryan Head Spa in San Diego. So I've actually been a hairstylist for over 20 years and then after many years behind the chair I was seeing a lot of my guests with scalp concerns and I didn't really know like what to say or how to rectify those because we don't actually get taught too much about it in school. It's kind of like just briefly more focus and emphasis is on the hair and then after kind of digging into some holes and discovering some new scalp treatments I decided just to take that on board myself play around with some products, share those with my guests. And then I decided to go back to school last year to study trichology, which is more in depth of the hair and scalp. So my business partner, Kim and I, we started Ryan Head Spa back in the summer of 2023, actually. We're a fairly new company. Kim is a wonderful and talented esthetician, and it just truly made sense for the skincare and the scalp care aspect to join together and come to life to bring Ryan Head Spa. So the origins of the head spa treatments can actually be traced back to ancient Ayurvedic traditions, but more so in the past 20 years, it's become really popular in Japan. So Japanese head spa treatments typically include an array of treatments, and that can include hot towels, different forms of scalp massage. One of my favorites is actually the waterfall aspect of the treatment. We could call it Shirodara, which means a gentle flow and that could be water, that could be a hot oil, that could be even milk. So here at Rind, we actually use a waterfall healing method with the option to choose on a hot oil treatment, which we custom make in-house. When our clients come for the first time, they're really surprised about the personal approach that we take. We truly want to dive into scalp health and really understand that this treatment is a lot more than just a really fancy hair wash. So we got their I Am Refreshed package. This is a 75 minute treatment and it was $160 each. So Sierra and Kenzie's appointment today is actually going to start with an in-depth consultation and they'll be taking a look at their scalp, maybe for the first time at their follicles with the microscope. It's really cool to see your scalp for the first time if you haven't already. And what we're looking for is different types of inflammation, maybe some dryness, maybe some irritation that they might have experienced. We'll be able to see all of that under the microscope. Um, let's take a look at your scalp. Um, scared for this part. <laughs> it's gonna put me on blast. I don't know what that's <laughs> 
Let's try. With some build up. Do you see these little things right here? Yeah. The gold. All right. Yeah. So for the most part, you're just a little dry. We're gonna get you nice and exfoliated. Mm -hmm. Looking with my naked eye, just to see, I do see a little bit of um, dry scalp going on from here. So we'll take a look through the scope, and that'll tell us a little bit more in depth about what's going on. Okay. Ew! <laughs> oh my gosh! So the base of the scalp, which is basically like the skin of your head, we want it to be like a shiny, bright white, opaque color. Okay. So here we'll, we're seeing like a little bit of like natural sweat buildup, product yeah. buildup. I was gonna say, stuff. is those little clumps, is that like product buildup? So, uh, seeing that you do have a little bit of flakiness going on, to me, this is like dead skin buildup. Okay. Um, so that means I need an exfoliation? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And just getting in there a little bit better when you do shampoo. Okay. Because our hair is really thick. Sometimes when we shampoo, we're kind of just like moving the hair around and not really paying attention to the scalp. Yeah. We really need to like get up in there and make sure we're actually shampooing. Uh -huh. um, we shouldn't be worrying about the ends because we want all the natural oils, especially for the curls, to keep them nice and hydrated. Mm -hmm. I loved the consultation because I'm one of those weird people who loves like close up cameras. Like when people post on TikTok like their earwax videos with those little cameras. Oh, see, she was showing me, she's like, see right here. I'm like, yeah, I see it next. See, and I'm this like, it doesn't need to be on the internet. I'm like, is this touch screen? Let me just <laughs> zoom in here. A vulnerable <laughs> moment up close, my scalp. I've never seen it. Now the internet's gonna see it. But it was cool. I, I want one of those cameras at home. See, now I do too because I feel like after every shower, I'm gonna be like, where am I missing? There? Yeah. <laughs> um, you were having concerns about hair loss hair shedding? Um, I mean, not like anything crazy. I just, I know that like after I had kids, when my hair like fell out a little bit postpartum, it just didn't come back all the way. Like the, I have, these are super short and it's kind of just in these the areas. areas. Yeah. Um, it's really good to look at your blood work oh, and gosh. see like if there's anything like on the lower end of normal, especially vitamin D, your iron, mm -hmm. um, cause you want to be in a more optimal level. Yeah. Um, so whenever you're having those deficiencies, your scalp can have um, a reaction to start to mm -hmm. let go of that hair. So uh, for you and your scalp symptoms, I would recommend you using more of like a lightweight scalp oil or even a scalp tonic just to help add in that extra moisture because especially if we're not washing as often, we're kind of depriving it of moisture. Okay. Yeah, I feel like I've been afraid of putting oil on my scalp because I do put some oil on the ends of my hair mm -hmm. when I'm refreshing it between washes. But to put oil on my scalp, I'm, I would worry that that would make my whole hair look oily. Exactly. Yeah, so no worries to be scared. You just wanna make sure it's a scalp oil. So you don't wanna put like an argan oil that's made for your ends on your scalp. Okay. It's gonna be too heavy, it's gonna clog the pores. My consultant, Olivia, was just very knowledgeable about everything. I felt like I could have sat there and asked her questions about scalp health for like ever. My girl, Lisa, she was like telling me how all of these things impact your scalp and how it can really you know, make, make your hair fall out or you're just the way it reacts, like stress, vitamin deficiencies, PCOS, like really anything. And I honestly had no idea. I didn't even know that like you could look at your scalp and be like, mm, deficient. Cause she was saying, she was like, a lot of people will look at their blood work and it will mm. tell them things that they're deficient in or just like things that they're lacking and how that really impacts your scalp. And I had no idea. I thought we were just getting like massages, like right. head massages and they're gonna like wash your hair. I didn't know it was like an actual health thing. I feel like it's opened a door, a whole new door into like more self care. I must spend three hours washing my hair. <laughs> and then um, I saw on your form that you're washing once a week. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll typically for like follicle health, we'll um, recommend doing every other day or every second day. Okay. And what that's going to do, it's going to stay on top of like any dead skin cell buildup, product buildup, um, sebum, um, just to keep those follicles really nice and open. Okay. Um, and then we'll have you change into our spa wrap, which is the white one and then the yellow one on top. And then I'll come back and we'll do um, a dry head massage and a little bit of guided breathing just to kind of relax before we go in. So the next step in the process, they'll be guided back through to the spa room where kind of like a regular massage, you'll be laid on the bed, wrapped in a nice cozy heated blanket and just ready to begin the service. When we first walked into the treatment room, I felt like the girl in Fifty Shades of Grey when she sees like all of the toys <laughs> all for of the, the first toys. time. And she's like so naive and she's like, I can't possibly imagine what you would do with all these things. She's a reader now if you can't tell. <laughs> 
it was a little overwhelming, but I was like, I have to trust that she's more experienced. No, she it, knows it what was. She's doing. We walk in and there's just a tray of all these tools. And I'm like, that one has an on button. <laughs> What's that one? All treatments are customized based on what our guest truly needs. So that might include a detox shampoo to remove any buildup, some type of scrub, and different massage techniques and oils based on what the guest truly needs. The the like kickoff shampoo wash was like the shampoo of a lifetime. Oh, I lost count of how many shampoo things they did, but I know at one point it was like icy hot. Did you feel that? <gasps> yes. Because at first I was like, am I having an allergic reaction or is this supposed to happen? <laughs> but then I was like, why does it feel like Elsa and like a dragon are just giving my scalp a little kiss? <laughs> it was just like so beautiful. That was the, it was magical. It wasn't just like rubbing icy hot on the sore muscle. It was a little magical. It was, and then that oh. on top of like with the massage. Oh, yeah. Oh my gosh, the the way that they were applying the products and massaging the scalp was just. <laughs> I kept hearing you be like, "This is amazing." <laughs> this is fantastic. This feels amazing. I thought at one point you had fallen asleep because they said oh, that was common. Yeah, I could have easily, but I was like, I must soak in every second of this. That's the thing. I would pay for just an hour straight of the shampooing. Oh, I got goosebumps no less than 900 times. Like my leg hair probably looks like yours now. <laughs> my favorite part of everything was when she did the little tappy taps. Oh, that I was nice. Unreal. That was just, like I imagine when people talk about the ASMR tingles, cause that's not something I've ever experienced. I imagine it's like that. It Those was like little taps. Full body chills. My favorite part was when she was literally pulling my hair. <laughs> and I didn't want to be like, yeah, I love that. Pull my hair. But like that was, it was the best. I was about to be like, you can pull it harder. <laughs> This video is gonna get demonetized. <laughs> they also massage not only our scalp, but our forehead, sides of our face, our chest, our neck, and our that- ears. Yes! That, oh, that was my second favorite. That's the best. The vibrating tool also felt so amazing. I, I'm excited to watch this footage back because our eyes were covered the whole time. Yeah. So I was feeling these things, but I have no idea what it looks like. And I think that almost like heightened the senses. Oh my gosh, 100%. But that was definitely a surprise. All of a sudden, I I felt like bzzz, and I was like, oh. Then comes my absolute favorite part of the process is our waterfall flow. The waterfall thing felt really amazing. Mm -hmm. I, the, just having the water shoot at your head from like all angles moving up and down, incredible. 10 out of 10. This is one of the Japanese techniques that this spa uses and it just felt so amazing. Amazing. The waterfall is the signal of end of service and after that, we will be guiding you back through to the consult room where we will reevaluate your scalp and talk about any products that might benefit your scalp health in the future. So one thing to help with build up as well would be, you can air dry like your ends, but if you hit the scalp with the blow dryer, it helps get some of the moisture off of the scalp. Okay. When you leave the scalp with like any bit of moisture, it leaves kind of like a grounds for bacteria. Yeah. And fungus to grow, which is dandruff. Right. After the treatment is over, they bring you back into the consultation room and they blow dry your scalp because they said that's very important. Yeah, that was interesting because I feel like a lot of the time my scalp, or at least this back part of my scalp where my hair is extra thick, is the last part of my hair to dry when I air dry it. And Olivia was talking about how wet hair sitting on the scalp can lead to more like bacteria and mm -hmm. growth. And so if you can take your hair dryer back there for just a little bit and dry it, it makes a big difference. I was also talking to them and they said that we should be washing our hair every second day, which I also thought was interesting because I thought, yeah, I mean, I wash my hair like once a week, not because I'm abiding by laws because one, I'm a mom and I don't have time, but I've heard that it's good to wait longer. So it's interesting how the recommendations kind of vary based off the professional. Yeah, I felt this like push and pull between the scalp specialist and my hairstylist because my hairstylist has said like, try to wash your hair no more than once a week. Like, okay, and I'm, I'm someone who loves to wash it all the time. Mm -hmm. So she's like, okay, okay, four days, but like try not to do it any sooner than that because it dries it out. And then the scalp specialist is like two to three days is ideal. And I'm like, what's the best thing for my hair? And also like what works for me? Mm -hmm. And I think that's a lot of it, right? Is like taking in all the information, different professionals are gonna recommend different things based on what their focus is and building a routine that works for you. That being said, 
I do think after this, I'm gonna lean towards washing my hair a little more often, or at least not feeling guilty about it. Yeah, I think that's it. I think it also just depends the person, you know, their hair or their scalp, like, you know, what your problem is or what you're trying to avoid or prevent or whatever. Okay, all right, are we going in? We are going in. Wow. Beautiful. Oh my God, that is a clean scalp. Yeah, so <laughs> it's that shiny, opaque color we were talking about. We can see the root of the follicle. We got a lot of that buildup out of there which is really good for your first time. You can even see the base of the follicle right there. Look at how clean my scalp is. Not a flake in sight. Perfectly clean. I could not believe how clean my scalp looked in these close-ups. Oh my, and honestly, it's not even, like we see it, but we could feel it. I felt like I could breathe out of my scalp. Like it, I've never felt so clean, so fresh. Like, and then to see it and like the difference was crazy. It was just a different level of clean than I feel like I've ever experienced. And then just the amazing feeling of all the products they used. I feel like just made my scalp feel awake and alive and refreshed. And I'm like, how do, how do I do this all the time? All the time. I know, I was like, do you guys have regulars here? Because I feel like I'm gonna be here every hair wash day. And that's something I asked Olivia, I was like, how often should we be going ideally? And she said it's like a six to eight weeks if you're trying to like really keep up with it, but that it can also be a really refreshing thing to do to treat yourself. Mm -hmm. That's the thing is this is an expensive spa treatment. So I don't think it's something I'm gonna, you know, do on a regular basis, but I would absolutely take this over doing a facial and maybe even a massage. I know, I mean, you kind of get a little bit of all of it. And I just, I thought it was so interesting how they talked specifically about how it is your skincare, right? It's your face, but it's up here, like that's skin. And I mean, there were so many things that really tied into that. Like, you know, sometimes you're supposed to double cleanse. They also said, if you've been using dry shampoo, if it's been a while, different products, like sometimes you wanna double shampoo, sometimes you wanna be scrubbing for two to three minutes. And so, I mean, that was a big takeaway for me, just really how much scalp care is skincare. Absolutely. And as someone who loves skincare and like pampering myself at home that in that way, I wanna try and bring some of this scalp treatment into my routine for that because this is very much a, a neglected area up here. I bought the InnerSense exfoliator they use because that I feel like is a, an easy thing to add to my routine. She said, use it like every two weeks and to get that kind of like extra level of clean from home without going and doing like the full treatment. Yeah, Lisa, she said that she does, she calls it like an everything wash. And so like once a week for people who are just starting maybe once every two weeks to really take the time to do the oils, to do the exfoliant. And I love that. I mean, my everything showers are sacred to me. And now I've just added a couple steps. Self-care time. There you That's go. That's for me. <laughs> I think I will absolutely consider going and getting a head spa treatment instead of like a massage or a facial when you're pampering yourself or having a girl's day. Like even, you know, with my C-section coming up, yes. I was thinking about, you know, oh, maybe a couple days before I'll go get a massage. But now I'm thinking instead I might want to go back to rind, get a treatment, and not only have that relaxing experience in the moment, but go into my hospital stay with like the cleanest, cleanest of clean hair. Freshest hair. I mean, even just going into postpartum, I mean, you know, sometimes it's hard to carve time out to shower and to take care of yourself. And if you know your scalp's almost had like a reset, yeah. it's fresh and clean, feels good. I think that's amazing. Yeah, and I just hate that like itchy scalp mm -hmm. feeling. And the way my hair feels now, we're like two hours since the treatment, I feel like it's going to be days until that comes back. Like I just feel so, so clean. Yeah. I mean, I would definitely go back. I loved it. I think like what you said, it's kind of on par with like a massage or a facial. So I think depending on what you are looking for, what you want to do or what you feel like you need. I mean, I loved it. So that is our head spa experience for the very first time. Not the last time though. What a day. What a day. What a video. All in a day's work. Right? We worked hard today. I think, I think this video warrants a follow-up. Oh, I think it's necessary. Yeah, perhaps three. Quarterly. Right, yes. Probably, yeah. just to know how our scalps are doing. <laughs> Huge thank you to Leanne and Kim, the owners of Rhine Spa, and to their amazing scalp technicians, Olivia and Lisa, who just gave us the most relaxing, reinvigorating hair wash of our lives. This was a fun one. This was great. This is my favorite so far. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Be confident, be kind to your body, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.